Welcome back to The Price of Business. I am your host, Kevin Price, talking to you about you and your business. I'm always delighted to have John Veely on the program. Last couple of weeks, a lot of John Veely on the program, which is always good. Love hearing from you, my friend. He's an attorney extraordinaire. His website is onlinevisas.com. And he always brings so much to the program, and, You know, starting off with his very innovative approach to visas, but also some of the great guests he brings on. John, as always, glad to have you. Kind of give us your elevator speech and uh, introduce us to your guest today. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, at Veely Law Firm, uh, we deliver the American dream uh, by utilizing our website, onlinevisas.com. We reach out to uh, American employers that want to hire the best in the world, and they need visas to do that. We also help them establish operations and move people to other places around the planet. And we help individuals uh, that want to come to America with uh, their skills, opportunities, monies, uh, and whatever uh, to uh, to make this uh, this place uh, their home. Yeah, I love it. Today we're uh, we're bringing in Jeffrey Caden from uh, the law firm of Gottlieb Rackman and Reisman. Uh, Jeffrey is nothing less than a guru in intellectual intellectual property law, IP law. That's uh, the handling of trademarks, copyrights, um, and uh, patents. And Jeffrey is in New York City, and he is a fantastic lawyer. We're really excited to have him on the show today. Welcome to the program. Why don't you go ahead and start off telling us about giving us an overview of what your firm is all about, Jeffrey? Uh, sure. Uh, I am the uh, managing partner at Gottlieb, Rackman, and Reisman. We are a boutique uh, intellectual property uh, firm, patents, trademark, copyrights, and, and we uh, work with clients in terms of protecting uh, their innovations and protecting their brands. Very good. John, your first question? Well, um, Jeffrey, tell us a little bit about your background. I understand that you went to Johns Hopkins on your way to become a doctor and uh, took a little side turn and now became one of America's best IP lawyers. Tell us a little bit about your path. Yeah, sure. I went to Johns Hopkins uh, thinking I was going to go to medical school. I was a biomedical engineering major, really at the urging of my father to be an engineer. And Medicine really didn't pan out, and I decided since I'm at Hopkins, you know, you go, you go to some professional school, so law school ended up to be the choice. And I went to law school at Georgetown and uh, worked at the patent office uh, part-time while I was at law school and uh, ended up going into patent uh, trademark copyright law. Uh, my background sort of worked out very well because I had a lot of uh, technical work at Hopkins in, in engineering, chemical, mechanical, electrical, and that's sort of how I got into the patent field. I was reading, it wasn't too long ago, about how things have been extremely backwards, if you will, in the patent area, that there hadn't been updates in the way things have been done in literally decades. Kind of give us a state of uh, uh, patents today, if you will, from a uh, governmental, governmental standard. Sure. Uh, well, I think things have actually changed quite a bit over the last couple of years. Uh, in the United States, it used to be the rule of thumb was, from a patent standpoint, first to invent. That's the party that would prevail. And it's really changed uh, over the last couple of years, and now it's in conformity with uh, most foreign jurisdictions, and now it's first to file. So the, the, the rule of thumb that I tell clients is if you're coming up with a new invention, you better, you better get on file uh, right away, because if you're delayed and somebody else comes up with that a similar idea and they file before you, you're going to have a problem in terms of uh, securing patent rights. Mm -hmm. John? Well, Jeffrey, um, so... Um Protecting intellectual property, ideas, uh, America is a very creative place, but uh, many of us are afraid of what happens about our ideas and our ventures if we go overseas. Can you talk about your practice and how you protect your clients' uh, inventions and, and, and marks and other things uh, in emerging countries like China, Brazil, and other places? Sure. Uh, intellectual property is not really practiced just in the United States. Companies uh, of any significance are global companies. So you have to make sure that they're secured uh, from an IP standpoint both here in the U.S. and overseas. And we work with a network of, of, uh, of associates in uh, both uh, commercially significant countries as well as emerging uh, market uh, countries to protect uh, uh, clients' inventions and brands. 
And uh, years ago, I would have said if you were going to try to gain protection for, for a patent or even a trademark uh, in China, India, which are very significant emerging countries these days, I would have said don't bother spending your money. But today, uh, with the right attorney uh, or associate in these countries, you can enforce those rights, you can protect those rights, you can get injunctions, you can stop counterfeiting. Uh, you really want to uh, uh, be proactive uh, in, in those type of countries uh, to make sure that, uh, you, that, that your innovations or your brands are, are not copied. Jeffrey, what's behind those changes? Uh, really, beca- uh, the, the, these countries have, re- have come to realize that if they're going to be part of the international marketplace, they've got to get up to speed in terms of enforcement. And so they ha- the governments there have been very proactive uh, in, in creating new uh, regulations and new laws, as well as getting the... Uh, 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 the, the courts to, 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 follow the, to follow those laws and, and to get the police to, 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 to be proactive in enforcing things such as, you know, uh, such as in counterfeiting situations. Uh, it's, it's really been a, a, a change in mindset in these countries, and again, because they really want to be part of the international uh, uh, marketplace, part of the international intellectual property marketplace. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. John? Um, Jeffrey, you've been practicing for 30 years out of a, a boutique called Gottlieb, Rackman, and Reisman. Tell us a little bit about your approach, why what you do with your specialization is better than the alternatives. Well, as a boutique, we uh, cater to uh, small and mid-sized companies, and we provide services of, of, a, of, a, of a caliber that's at a level of, of the big boys, the big law firms, but at a price point that really is, is, is better geared uh, towards uh, uh, towards those type of uh, uh, towards the mid-sized companies, the small-sized companies, and and with my experience, when when uh, and and with others in my firm with similar experience, when you hire us, you get an attorney, uh, you get us, you don't get an, a, a one or two-year junior associate, you get you get an experienced uh, attorney uh, to work with to guide you both on a, on a patent side. A trademark side as well as on the business side, uh, providing good legal services is is really a, a, a two part attack. One is providing good legal services, and the other part is providing good business advice. Yeah, very interesting. By the way, I do want to mention you couldn't have made it any easier for people to learn more about you all by uh, making your website grr dot com, as in Gottlieb. Rackman and Reisman. So that's well, thank you very much. GRR.com. And of course, John can be found over at onlinevisas.com. John, your next question? Um, yeah, Jeffrey, um, tell us a little bit about um, it, what you talked about a little bit um, was that the danger of having an idea and maybe putting it out in the marketplace first. Tell us about the pitfalls yeah. uh, that that may uh, be for an inventor or yeah, a company, that's a very, you know, that's a, a very tech company point. that wants to get out there and you know puts their puts their toe in the water. What's what's the problem with that from yeah, your perspective? Well, I think in advising clients, you must tell clients that if they're looking to gain patent protection uh, in the U.S. and particularly worldwide. You really want to make sure you're on file with at least what's called a provisional patent application before you go public with the invention. Otherwise, you may lose those rights. So it's very important that a uh, prospective client, a, a company that's innovating, that it files before it goes public, that it, before uh, it's out uh, uh, in the marketplace. So uh, it, it's really critical. You could lose significant rights if you don't act uh, if you don't act promptly. Uh, the, on a, from a trademark standpoint, the, the biggest pitfall I think clients get, uh, get uh, unfortunately involved with is, is they, they, they think they don't, the mark or the, or the name is not out there, and, and they start to use it, and then they start to use it some more and some more, and it's on literature, it's on cards, etc., and then they get a, a notice letter. It's so critical that before you start using a mark or a name that you have to do a search to make sure it's okay. A search is, 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 is point number one before going forward with a brand or a mark or, or, or a logo or whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with that, we're going to have to wrap it up. John, final thoughts? About 30 seconds left. Yeah. Um, all I can think about, um, you know, from the perspective of clients um, and having a guy like Jeffrey is uh, give his office a call. Um, if you've got something you want to put out there, don't lose it. Don't lose it to the Chinese. Don't lose it to your competitors. Uh, call Jeffrey. He's a, a real guru when it comes to uh, uh, IP law and, and really the, the best way to go. Very Thank you so good. much. Thanks to both of you gentlemen. Great information. Do want to remind the uh, listener, best content here shows up over there at usdatareview.com. While they're liking on Facebook, follow it on Twitter. Stay tuned for more after this. <laughs> 